The first all-virtual Health Systems Process Improvement Conference 2021 comes your way February 24th through the 26th. Save with our lowest registration rates ever and save even more with no travel, hotel, or visa costs required. More than 100 sessions are scheduled for this event, including dozens of solutions that solve legions of pandemic problems like drive through services, video-enabled clinics, and PPE procurement. Discover why hundreds of your healthcare improvement colleagues return year after year. Register now at IISC.org slash HSPI slash register. This is Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, where we talk to industrial and systems engineers about their work, ideas, and solutions. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Problem Solved, the IISE podcast. I'm James Swisher, the new Director of Continuing Education for IISE, and this episode of the podcast is part of the Problem Solved Career Path series, in which we chat with instructors and students about their experiences in professional development and continuous improvement throughout their careers. Joining us today are the long-serving Director of Continuing Education for IISE, Larry Aft, PE, and Dr. Elizabeth Cudney, one of our wonderful instructors. Welcome, Larry and Beth. Thank you. Thank you, James. Great to have you. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves and tell the audience a little bit about your backgrounds? My name is Beth Cudney. Um, I've been doing Lean and Six Sigma since the mid-90s, so about 25 years. And it's an area I've been really passionate about. I started out in industry and have about um, 10 years of industry experience in automotive and then switched over to healthcare and went back for my PhD and then and switched over to academia. That is a broad career. I've been very fortunate to kind of play in uh, every single industry, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Sure. As many of you know, I've spent the last 19 years as Director of Continuing Education at IISE. Prior to that, I spent over 30 years in the academic world. And while doing that, I had the good fortune to consult with probably close to 200 different organizations, uh, applying all kinds of industrial engineering tools and methods to gee, just a wide variety of different kinds of businesses, anything from healthcare to government to manufacturing to insurance to, I could fill our whole hour just <laughs> listening to different applications. As James mentioned when he introduced himself, he's the new director. Uh, a little while ago decided it's time after all these years to, as I said, stop and smell the roses and do some other things with my life. Well, we're so grateful to, to have you on the podcast, Larry, and grateful for all the time that you spent at IISE and, and around the country and around the world serving others. I think um, if you pull out the dictionary and look up industrial and systems engineer, there's a picture of Larry Aft. <laughs> you are know? uh, really, you, you're the quintessential uh, industrial engineer. So thank you for all that you've done. And speaking of all that you've done, <laughs> there's a really great article in the IIC magazine uh, recently on your career. And I, there was something that you said that really perked my interest. And I'd love to hear more about it. You said, we cannot continue to do our jobs without continuing to learn. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. College education, even a great industrial engineering education, is really just the preparation for the rest of your life. I firmly believe that spending all that time teaching in the academic world and then teaching in the professional world, that we just need to learn how to learn. College prepares you to do that. Right. And as we have seen in our field, things have continued to evolve, whether it's technology, whether it's computer applications. When I was a student, we used to talk about some of the, what are now basic statistical analysis tools. Conceptually, we can understand them, but without the computing power, we just could not really use them effectively. Sure. So we have to continue to learn whether it's 
as I mentioned, new technology, application of computers. We're talking a lot now about AI, and that's certainly going to have an impact on how we learn and how we train people. Well, that brings me to a question for Beth, I think. Beth, you, you teach a lot of our Lean and Six Sigma courses along with, <laughs> along with a lot of other courses that you teach. Um, w- when you're teaching those courses to professionals, um, I mean, what's it like to help them advance their career? And just as Larry said, you know, they, a lot of them come in with a basis of understanding and a basis of knowledge. What's it like to help somebody who is already a professional <laughs> add to that knowledge? It's really an amazing experience because starting out in industry and then going into academia, um, I've really seen the best of both worlds and how everything comes together with training. And when you see it click with someone, that's really kind of the the biggest um, benefit, really, of, of doing the training and seeing how people can take it and they can apply it. And it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to help people really advance their careers, understand where they want to go in life, because it's not just about the training itself. It's about understanding that individual. What what do they want to accomplish? What are their goals in life? What do they want to do? And as you have those discussions along with the topics, you can help them, you know, really drive their career, attain their goals. So they're ready for the next step. And that's just a great thing. I've been very fortunate to have wonderful mentors in my life and like Larry, who have have helped me along the way. And so it's a great feeling to kind of take that now and and use those skills that individuals like Larry have have taught me to help others advance their careers. That's great, Beth. And and you're right. It's so important to have those mentors in your life, you know, whether it's as a student or as a professional, uh, you know, after school to have folks who help you along. I'm I'm wondering if either of you could tell me about somebody who's been important as a as a mentor, either a particularly important instructor or a particularly important mentor in your life. I can start. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, it's interesting because I I have a, a pretty long list of people <laughs> that I would associate with, and I would always encourage people to have a mentor. I've always tried to have people that are mentors that are you know, a few years ahead of me because they're, they're kind of not too far off from where I want to be. So it's an attainable goal. But then I've also had amazing mentors that have have been in industry, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years longer than, than I have. And then honestly, I have quite a few mentors that are younger than me because of so many things that are changing in, in academia. And so that also brings about, um, and just the new challenges and things that are happening. And so if I if I had to name a few, well, I'd go back to probably my undergraduate days at North Carolina State and Henry Nuttall taught quality. And he was an amazing professor. We broke out the wooden catapults that <laughs> was in the 90s, early 90s. Right. And we were, we were using the catapults already. And just his passion for teaching. And then, you know, my master's advisor at the University of Hartford, Deb Deschetti. And then um, I started working a lot with Larry at that point when I started working on my PhD. Um, and so I've been very fortunate. And I'd, I'd have to kind of stop for a second, though, and say probably my, my favorite mentor was my father. And he was one of the reasons that I got into industrial engineering. I remember the days of... Um, being in elementary school, middle school, and high school. And I was fortunate to have someone that loved going to work. Right. He would whistle going to work on his, on the way to work. And he would (laughs) my home. (laughs) That's great. All his interactions, it didn't matter where he went because everything's a process that can be improved. And he mentored everyone. It didn't matter if it was a waitress at a restaurant, um, you know, everywhere we went, he was mentoring somebody. Right. (laughs) And that really set the stage for kind of how I wanted to live my life yeah. and help others. Well, and your, your dad's kind of a, a legend in the field as well, right? I like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's pretty cool to have a second generation IE. <laughs> and he'd be quite proud. Um, he passed away about 15 years ago, um, but he'd be quite proud that his granddaughter is now going into industrial engineering. and is a, No kidding. 
No, she's a freshman at Purdue in industrial engineering. Wow. That's awesome. That's really awesome. <laughs> well, I love what you said, Beth, about having mentors that kind of span the field. Those who are um, just a little ahead of you, so you have an attainable goal. <laughs> those are, are good ways ahead of you so that you can get their wisdom. And then those who maybe are a little younger than you, then you can you know, pick up on the latest and greatest <laughs> technology. That's a really great approach. How about for you, Larry? Well, as Beth said, there are probably too many to name, and I don't want to leave any out. So I'm just going to focus on one individual, uh, and that was Dr. Frank Greiner. Taught me my first statistics class, first quality class way back at Bradley University, long before there was even a Six Sigma. Right. But without knowing that he would become a mentor, I kept in touch with him after I graduated. And whenever I ran into decision points in my career, he was always there, always willing to answer my questions. We had a standing date every year at the old AIIE conferences for a cup of coffee (laughs) and to get caught up. Uh, Got to know not only him, but his family over the years and just meant an awful lot to me and how my career path unfolded. And just one more little Note about Frank, he not only mentored me, but many years ago after we started the very first completely online graduate degree, part of the learning experience for our grad students who were literally all over the world is they had to make two trips to campus to participate in, I guess, the presentation and defense of their graduate their master's thesis or project. And it turned out on several occasions at that particular time, Frank was at the University of Tampa. And then he would go back to the St. Louis area where he was living at the time. Right. Every spring at the end of the semester. And we scheduled these events often on the day that he would be driving up I-75 through Atlanta (laughs) and the campus where I was teaching at the time was about two minutes off the expressway. Right. So he would adjust his schedule so that he could come and visit with my grad students. And it was just something he did not have to do, but his way of giving back, helping out with the next generation. That's so really neat. just always looked up to him and everyone should have at least one mentor like that as they go through their career. Absolutely. And uh, uh, also done like a true IE, right? So he uh, optimized his network flow uh, by <laughs> only, only having to jump off the interstate for a few miles on his trip back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's wonderful. I, I think uh, it's so important to have folks like that. And Larry, you've you've been that person for a lot of people. You've been an educator since 1971. What's what's changed? What's stayed the same <laughs> for everybody out there who is, you know, obviously you're just listening to the audio. Larry gave us an eye roll when I said that uh, <laughs> he's been an educator since 1971. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds longer ago when you mention it that way, James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you, I could I could say it differently. You've been an educator for many years, Larry. What's <laughs> what's changed and what stayed the same? <laughs> well, the obvious answer is the technology of learning. When I started back in the dark ages, uh, we had chalkboards and. Occasionally an old 16 millimeter movie. (laughs) And that pretty much limited what we could do in the classroom other than be creative with some of our lab exercises. As years have gone by, obviously, everything from the ability to do presentations with computers to online learning has really changed. Uh, Student expectations have changed. 
Uh, but I suppose that could just be someone my age looking back and saying it's not quite the same as when I started. And of course it isn't. A lot more changes, I'm sure, are just around the corner. And you, James, and your role, and Beth, and your role as a educator, we're going to see more and more online, more and more effective online. Yeah. This uh, use of Zoom was a step forward. If you'd have seen the technology we had to use when we put the first graduate degree online <laughs> and people were doing dial up at 28.8K. <laughs> It's a whole different world, yeah. but I foresee in the near future, we will take advantage of things like artificial intelligence to figure out exactly what and how we'll incorporate virtual reality into the presentations online. Years ago, I was at a conference speaking about online education. And there was a gentleman on the program from Microsoft, and he was anticipating the use of all kinds of fancy computer graphics, almost making online learning like a game. Right. And the example he used that I'm sure all of our ISEs can relate to was a basic chemistry lab. So we'll have the student online, and they'll be told in the virtual lab to mix some chemicals. And if they mix it properly, they get the reaction they're expecting. And if they don't, and for example, a missed chemical or the wrong amounts could result in an explosion. Right. He said there would be an explosion all over your screen. (laughs) And I could see us incorporating lots of things like that as we get better at using this technology. Absolutely. And that's a wonderful thing about, about technology is it gives us a safe environment to, to experiment on things that um, could otherwise be dangerous. And so that's uh, yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful example. Beth, how about for you, as you, as you see technology change and, and uh, the, over the last year, obviously it's been <laughs> a challenging time to be an instructor. What, what keeps you motivated? What's what's rewarding for you as an instructor? Well, so much has changed. I think there's still the the same basic kind of passion there. Um, individuals like Larry and I got into into teaching and training and, and being educated educators because of our passion to help others. So I think that's still there. Now it's just using the technology so that we can still create that environment where students can ask questions and we've been able to use technology. I mean, Zoom has come a, a long way and has changed a lot of, a lot of things in the classroom, but we're still able to connect with students. And even though with the pandemic, we're doing so much more online and I, and I agree we'll, we'll continue to keep going more and more online, but with office hours being virtual, I've been very impressed with the turnout with students and then and just from a training perspective, there's so much you can do online as well. It still resonates well. And it's just a matter of then making sure that people feel involved, included in the discussion. And as to me, as long as it's, there's still some aspect of face-to-face, it makes a big difference because then you can see if students are getting it, if they're struggling, you know, whether it's a student in a class or a training participant, you know, whoever it might be. We still have that connection, which is good. And I think that, you know, that's, that's been a great advantage over the last, you know, five, 10 years is to continue to have that connection because it helps you really help others and explain things better. Absolutely. And Beth, do you think that is live instruction still the gold standard for you, but maybe the gap is closing to some degree with, with virtual online learning? That's a great question. It, it is, it's closing, I think. And there's, um, I'm very fortunate to be a university right now that does online education very well. Yeah. And I think that makes a, a, a very big difference because you have to have the structure and then you can still pair it with, you know, 
office hours or, or meetings through Zoom. And I think that there is some balance between that because you still have to have an instructor that's you can reach, you can talk to, that you can feel comfortable having that that conversation with. And I think that's great. And and with that, there's there's so many ways to do breakout meetings and you know separate groups, whatever it needs to be, um, to really focus that yeah. content. And I think the flexibility then helps quite a bit as well too, which is going to be, I think, a, a huge benefit as we move forward, because so many students are working. There's the structure just of having classes at a given time. Online education provides so many benefits to watch at your own pace. And that's, I think, going to be really more and more where everyone goes. I think that's a great, it's a great point that as we get better and better at this, we'll find ways really to enhance the, the overall experience so that you've got this kind of combination of self-paced material, personal connection, uh, live material when it's needed and in a way to integrate that all together. So, uh, not, not an easy task, but I think one that we're all, <laughs> that we're all continuing to work toward. Right. Absolutely. Larry, how about, how about for you? You, you, you've, Gosh, you have mentored so many black belts and master black belts over the years. What do you see as you know the most rewarding thing for you in in the work that you've done? I think I can sum it up fairly succinctly by saying uh, I hope I've made a difference. Had a lot of feedback over the years from former students that they learned something or learned an approach from the things that we talked about in class, from their projects, and they were able to help their organizations, help themselves uh, do better. And I hope that will, very simply stated, be a big part of my legacy. Absolutely, it is. And I don't think you have to hope, Larry. I, I can I can vouch for sure <laughs> that you have made a difference. Uh, I, I can vouch for me <laughs> that you've made a difference in my life. Best best race in her hand as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're just two, but a hundred percent sample on this call. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and if I could jump in for a second, when when you were talking about Frank Grina, um, I was fortunate to have met him. And it's interesting that when you talked about how you you met annually, this is something that Larry has definitely taken into his just way of life as well, too. Um, Larry and I annually met as well at, at a conference, the IISC conference, um, and would always catch up. And, and you've definitely made an impact not only on my life, but I know on many, many others. So, yes, we're very thankful. Thank you. That makes two of us, Beth. Larry, Larry always made a point to schedule time uh, at the Lean Six Sigma conference to <laughs> catch up for a coffee and a chat. <laughs> and that was always very much appreciated. Absolutely. Well, this has been a challenging year for everybody. But, you know, how have you adapted over the last year? What's changed for you? A lot. Well, <laughs> you know, Beth, you've, got a new, you've got a new position. I know that's a big change. Daughter in college. It's a big change. Right, right, right. After, after many years, um, kind of 17 years of being associated with the university, I switched to Maryville University in August. It's a big change there. I had a daughter that started at Purdue in industrial engineering. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to say she's doing very, very well. Wonderful. Um, so lots of changes there. Um, I think the, the biggest thing, too, is also from a personal standpoint of realizing that there's times where you just have to, we are in the middle of a pandemic and there's times where you just have to say, okay, I'm I'm taking the afternoon. I'm, I've got to have some time, which I don't think I ever really did that in the past because I was always so focused on what do I have to do next? Um, But that's been a great aspect. And I think the other thing that's changed so much personally for me and what I've tried to do is also realize that this is a lot for everyone. Um, And so making sure checking on, you know, my students, whether it's in the class or in a training session through IISC, you know, making sure everybody's okay. Um, And then 
knowing that Zoom's available so people don't feel like they're, you know, if they're confused on a topic, they're lost on something, need some help, or they're just simply overwhelmed because it happens to all of us, right? And I think that's been the the nicest thing that's come out of everything in the last year is I see more and more people that are are just kind, right? And, and are saying, you know, it's okay. We don't have to meet this deadline. Right. Right. It's not the end of the world that we're going to focus and, and make sure we're, we're healthy. We're taking care of ourselves. And so to take that into any classroom or, or training session, I think is, is making a big difference because we're, we're all isolated and, and finding those creative ways to connect with people because that's the most important thing, right? It, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, advancing your career is great, right? And, and it's always a wonderful thing to do, but it's better when you can do that when you have the support behind you, sure, right? And we can keep cheering each other on and being supportive. And I'm seeing that more and more um, and definitely something I'm trying to make a concerted effort to do. But I've I've enjoyed that part of what's happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find some you know some good in what's happening, and I, and that's something I keep going back to. Well, I think that's spoken like a true IE as well. I think as IEs, we're wired to look for you know obviously we're wired to look for what can be improved in a process, but I think we're also wired to look for the silver linings in those processes. You know what's what's good about this process that we can amplify. So I think that's. That's great. While this has been difficult, there are a lot of good things that we can <laughs> we can focus on and amplify. How about for you, Larry? How have you adapted over the last year? Well, have learned, I guess, to kind of build on what Beth just said, have learned that there's a lot more to life than work. And knowing of my impending retirement, uh, getting ready for the next stage of my life. Uh, that certainly has been a big change. Uh, the pandemic actually, I guess, could say lowered a lot of the pressure uh, because we could take time and focus on what we're doing and take time to focus on non-work activities. Yeah. It's been a challenge. Uh, it was probably personally a good way for me to start adjusting to not having to go to work every day <laughs> and give us, James, you and me, ample time to try to share with you 19 years worth of background and history so that you could carry on and build our programs to continue to serve our members and the general business community. Yeah, I think we're really fortunate to be able to have technology to <laughs> to help us work that process through. But uh, still, awfully big, awfully big shoes for me to fill. So I, I think, I think I could have um, mentored with you for years, Larry, and still <laughs> only known a fra fraction of what I uh, probably need to know. But I can't thank you enough for all the all the hard work you did to make the handoff and the transition so smooth for me. Uh, I've never come into a job where um, I had so much support and, um, and so much great advice coming in. So I can't thank you enough for that. You're welcome. Well, tell us each of you, tell us one important thing that you've learned over the last year. Since we're talking about education, continuing education and keeping your career healthy and your, and yourself healthy. So it doesn't have to be IE related. What's the most important thing you learned over the last year? Yeah, I can say the ability to adapt and change very, very quickly. Just as an example, uh, last March when the shutdown came, we had to completely change the way we delivered our training classes and to reschedule, reformat the 30 or 40 classes that we had in the pipeline at the time. Uh, ability to do that and to make sure that our students got the quality instruction that they were expecting and have come to expect from us. So this adaptability. How about for you, Beth? Wow. That's, that's a hard one to follow. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I mean, I, I would have said something similar about the adaptability because that's that really has been we, we have to rethink everything. And it's it's interesting. I mean, with my background, we're always redesigning and changing. Like, I mean, as part of the industrial engineer's role is to keep rethinking how we're doing things and to adapt is, is definitely something we've had to do over the last year. And then also the flexibility. I think that has been a, a huge aspect that we've had to consider is it's a, there's not a one size fits all because right now everybody else is in a, a different spot, right? They're, they're handling the, all this change in a different way. So not only do I have to adapt, but I also have to adapt in a way that's flexible for everyone else that I'm working with too as an educator, because people don't feel comfortable necessarily coming to the classroom, if, even if they can. Right. And then how they want to handle things, even, you know, whether it's over Zoom, because you don't know what kind of conditions they're, they're working in. So we have to be flexible to understand an understanding of, of what their own journey is, you know, personally, professionally, you know, just where they're at. And so really looking at those, those different aspects, um, right. I echo what, what Larry said about the adaptability and, and then add in the flexibility and the understanding just so that we're continuing to work with each other. And I think it's, it's a good trajectory for where we're going, right? Yeah. Um, that it used, we used to be so confined with our, our, our own office walls, but now we have a lot more flexibility where we work, when we work, and we've got to be flexible that it's not necessarily just the eight to five job anymore, but then flexible enough with ourselves to say, well, you know, I'm going to have a call tonight from eight to nine with, with this person. So I'm going to take an hour at two o'clock in the afternoon because the, the sun's out and I'm going to take right. a walk. Right. And it's okay <laughs> because I don't have those traditional, uh, you know, hours that I have to work within. Right. So the flexibility, the adaptability, the understanding, and then the balance of really balancing it all. So you're taking time for yourself to make sure that you're healthy. You're taking, you know, care of yourself because you can't help others if you're not taking care of yourself either. Yeah. I think that's so important. And I really like what you say, Uh, you know, in many ways, Larry started this tradition and I'd like to continue of trying to find ways to tailor our, our learning of uh, our courses and the things that we do to our students and so, you know, to the extent possible. And we didn't have so many tools to do that before, but we've got a lot more now. And then I think you make a great point too, Beth. It's not just about tailoring what we're doing for others, but also tailoring things for ourselves, making sure that we're taking care of, of our needs <laughs> as individuals as well. So that's right. Go for that hour walk. If you're, if you've got a, <laughs> a zoom call at eight o'clock tonight, go for that hour walk at one o'clock after lunch and, and you know, do something for yourself as well. I think that's really important. Well, what are you interested in learning next? I'm really interested in getting more and more into data analytics. Um, I've been doing Lean and Six Sigma for about 25 years. And you know, with the trends with big data and, and more and more data available, um, I've been working on, on the data analytics side for the last you know, several years. We had Industry 4.0 that's really driven the quality 4.0 aspects and there's just so much more that we can do from that perspective where, you know, we've taught the statistics for years and years and years, but how do we take that now and build our data analytics, our dashboards, um, our visualizations to continue to have um, more of a, a visual management system and things like that. There's just so much happening now in terms of data analytics that, and there's so much more because it does change so rapidly to continue learning about so that we can help organizations continue to benefit in those areas. We've got, I mean, like I said, just so much data out there that we can do predictive analytics, forecasting. We can respond much quicker to our customers now as well too with with different automation and then also just from a supply chain perspective just it increases the communication and we can use machine learning for the quality of our products that you know, that's where i'm i'm really interested in continuing down that journey 
things are changing so rapidly. It's, yeah. it's really amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I promise I didn't pay Beth to say any of that, but we do have some great courses coming up in January and February. <laughs> we have a, a course on AI. So uh, it's focused on machine learning as Beth talked about and a couple of courses on data analytics coming up in uh, February as well. So um, yeah, but shameless plug there. <laughs> 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 Larry, what are you interested in learning next? Mine's much more of a personal nature. Absolutely. And I'm trying to learn what I'm going to be doing next. I did have some plans when I originally anticipated retirement, and most of those have been blown out of the water due to uh, social distancing, due to the spread of the disease. So after the holidays, I'll be looking into some options on some volunteer work. So I guess I can say I can continue to give back. And it probably won't be real technical. It'll <laughs> be more in the service arena. Yeah. It's that point to totally change gears and try to help out where I can without as much of the responsibility. So it's a new set of learning. And for someone who's been career driven for 50 plus years, it's really something you have to learn. Absolutely. It's just not a switch to turn on and off. And I should say that um, we're fortunate that we've uh, somehow twisted your arm to to stay on to mentor our our black belts and our master black belts as well. Uh, nobody does it better. So, <laughs> well, well, while you may be learning some new non professional things, we're not going to completely let you go. <laughs> yeah. And while you're inserting shameless plugs, just to remind everyone that IISE does have our IISE solutions, and I'll continue to be looking after that in case any of our members or non-members who listen to this happen to have any need for industrial engineering related consulting. We're there to serve. That's a great point, Larry. Yeah, Larry um, Larry has really done a great job with IISE Solutions, and it's really a, an awesome alternative for, for folks who are looking for some help. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. I really appreciate both of your time and your insights. I um, can't thank you uh, enough for taking part in the Career Path series. And I wish you um, much health and much luck. And I hope that uh, everybody stays safe and healthy and keeps learning. So thank you very much, Beth. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of Problem Solved, the IISC podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Metro Atlanta. This podcast is produced by David Brandt, Keith Albertson, and Michael Hughes, and edited by David Brandt. You can listen to all episodes of Problem Solved and learn about sponsorship opportunities by visiting our website, podcast.iise.org. You can also learn more about IISE at the Institute's website, www.iise.org.